I hope you're having a great day today. Now, what I'm going to show you is this chord progression that I was playing a solo over. I'm going to show you how to play a bass line over it. I'm going to break down the theory behind it, which is really cool. The patterns, the techniques that you can use, and a few little ideas that you can sprinkle into your solos to make them sound good. Let's start with that chord progression. So we've got three chords over a four bar chord progression. We've got a C, B flat, F, C. major chords. Now you really need to know the overall key and we'll get to that but just to practice you can just go that's just a root, a five and an octave on the C. Down one tone to the B flat and then where that fifth is which is the eighth fret of the A string that's note F jump to that and then back to the the C again. Just to kind of get your hands shifting around playing bass lines and getting used to this. Now what key we're in, this is a really interesting one because all of these chords belong to the key of F major. So what we have really is a 5, 4, 1, 5, but I'm not thinking about it in that way. Those were the notes I was playing in the intro for the solo. And this is kind of the gist of this lesson really, is just to give you something interesting to practice and play over, you can download the backing track for free, no sign up or anything, just go follow the link and get it. And I want you to just get used to the fact that there are other scales and tonalities and harmonies out there. And this is one of them, this is called the C Mixolydian. Okay, funny name, silly name, but it's basically an F major starting on the fifth note. That's kind of what a mode is, okay? If you do that, you get this C mixolydian. Play this. And this chord progression just sounds really good. It's a little bit Guns N' Roses-esque, isn't it? If you look at a C, ma a C major scale, You'll see it's exactly the same as a C mixolydian with the exception of that seventh note, okay? So if you already know a major scale, which you must do, if you don't know that, make sure you do learn it. If you know that, you just flatten that seventh and that gives it this flavor, this five, whatever it is, you know? So there's the C, and there's that flat seven, the B flat. just sounds really great. So what we did earlier, we just did root five octave on the different chords. Now what you can do is you can think about, there's several ways of doing this and I wasn't playing a bass line on the intro, but if I were to do that, and that's primarily our job as bass players is to play bass lines, you've got those notes, but you, then you've got all the other notes within the key. So I could go. I was just playing the root, the five, the octave. And that scale or mode, you can use those words interchangeably. Then when I go to the B flat, that's a B flat Lydian. This is the mode that's built on the four chord. Okay, so I'm going back to thinking of this as major, F major. So B flat is the four chord, F, G, A, B flat, okay? And the notes of F major, it's just that starting from B flat. Then when we go to F, play F major. So you could think about it that way. And that's why when we go to a B flat, you've got that sharp four, which sounds really good. Just always know this. I've done a few lessons on this idea of 
knowing that, that you have chords that come from a major scale and that on each one you have triads and modes built on that. And it will take you a little bit of a while to get that in your head. But once you do, you'll craft bass lines really easily. Okay, let's go back to the kind of solo idea here. So I'm gonna click on the backing track here. I'm just gonna play and if I find something interesting, I'll let you know. That's just a scale that's used all the time. I'm not going to talk all scales because it's techniques and it's phrasing as well, but just note selection, this is important. So what I was doing there, basically a major pentatonic, put a note in between that second and third and you get like a, a major blues sound. What I love on a four string is that once you get there, this is a two strings, the E and the A, you can transfer the pattern to the next octave and do the same pattern. Okay, now we've talked about note selection a lot. So now let's talk about rhythms and phrasing. If you're doing a bass solo, those things are paramount, okay? And I remember, N never knowing what notes I was supposed to play on a solo. And that was the thing that really obsessed me. But then when I learned that, it was like, actually, the job here is to play fewer notes. And that's the thing, and that's to do with phrasing. So this is the speed. So I've always got this like, those are the quarter notes and I'm tapping my foot. And then I'm subdividing. So it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And these are like, every, that's 16th notes. Then you've got one and two and those are eighth notes. So you've got to be very aware of the underlying kind of groove going on, okay? And you listen to the, what have we got? You hear that ride cymbal? Duh, 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 duh. That's, that's, that's mapping out your eighth notes. Always listen to what the drummer's doing, you know? So those eighth notes, so. You know, if you want to inject a little bit more in there. You double the speed and you've got those sixteenths. Is anything doing sixteenths? Yeah, the rhythm guitar. Dun, 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 digga, digga, dun, dun. Okay, so you need to be free to insert. This is in bass lines, in fills, in solos, just in general bass playing. You need to be very aware of rhythms. Okay, so I've got, I'll just stick with this little pattern that I just showed you there. Right, that's a phrase. A phrase is like a musical sentence and you have to speak that way when you solo. If you play too many notes, it's just going to be like battering the listener over the, over the head. So if you just get your, your notes that sound good, that's your decent note selection, you've got your internal clock working really, really well automatically. So you've got your rhythms dialed in and then you can just use your technique, those three things, you've got your notes, your rhythm, your technique, to create on the fly phrases like. Okay, no backing track for now. This is how I suggest you practice too. You learn the shape you need to learn. What I'm doing here, I'm doing a little slide. So I, I love it when you've got three notes on one string, you can do pluck, pluck, slide. And then I'm, I'm in position for all these notes that are here, okay? So sequencing is great. Patterns, okay? So I've got my notes and I'm just creating patterns. Now see how your technique has to be really good. If my technique wasn't good enough to do this, I will stumble and I just won't be able to do this. So this is where you have to kind of, pr obviously practice, right? But, but break down, it really helps, I find anyway, to break down what it is that you need to learn. So I, I don't know where you're at with your playing. You know better than I do. So do you know that pattern? Okay, if you don't know that pattern that I just showed you, you need to learn that. If you're not so great with articulations, hammer-ons, slides, vibrato, if you're not so good on those, then you need to practice that too. You can actually combine those two elements in the same practice session, just so you know. Use the shape, memorize it, and practice articulations at the same time. 
add in a third element, which is rhythm, and you can be really practicing three things in one go. I do get a lot of questions about what do I practice, how do I practice, what does a practice session look like? So that's a little tip to help you. By the way, do subscribe to my channel because um, the practice side of things is, is really hot at the moment. A lot of people are asking me questions on that and it's the most important thing. So I'm going to do quite a lot of videos on that. So do subscribe. Now what I'll show you is putting the backing track on and just playing up the Mixolydian mode, the, the you know, C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C. Let's see what that sounds like. I literally went up the scale and I came back down and at the end I did some interesting rhythms. It's just C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C. When I get to the octave, I can shift to that note with my second finger. When I run out of strings on the G, I can do a nice little shift to get to the A with the first finger. The same as the end bit. not thinking about the rhythms, I'm just dun, 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 dun. I'm just doing you know, whatever comes to mind really. You need to know the notes and you need to be working constantly on your internal clock and your different rhythms to, to, for these things to be able to come out naturally in your playing when you're soloing, you know, practicing or in the studio or on the stage. It's got to be automatic. These are the things you're going to practice along with your technique. Right, that's just something cool that I wanted you to have a little look at and practice. So what I want you to do is download the, tr the track, the backing track. It's all free, there's no sign up, there's no nothing. You know, you just download the track and memorize the chord progression I'll put a little PDF of the patterns as well. Um, some of this, if you're new to music theory and, and bass playing in general, some of it may have gone over your head. Don't worry, just I would just get a practice journal and I would just write down some of the things that you confront that you need to work on, okay? And just have that as the next thing to practice. You know, practice three things in one, the, the shape, the technique and, and the rhythms. And if you do this sort of daily practice, uh, you'll incorporate new things into your playing every week and without knowing it, you'll get better as you go. So I hope you really enjoyed that lesson. I've got a lot more that are going to be like this, you know, so do leave a comment below. Make sure you like, subscribe, share the video. That really helps my channel. And I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day.